Good morning, church. We all experience fear, and hopefully we all experience faith. Psychologists tell us that there's, that when we're born, there's basically two fears that we have. That fear of falling, and that of noise. I guess that's why when you're a baby, when you see a baby in a little cloud clap of noise or something, the baby jerks. Or the same thing if they are about to fall. It'd be very interesting to know just how many different phobias are mentioned in the Bible. Indeed, our dictionaries probably betray us. Our age nowadays is frantic with fear. Members of the psychology class asked 500 people, what are you afraid of? And out of those 500 people, they ended up with 7,000 fears. But it shouldn't really be that way because Christ came to deliver us from our fears. The Bible speaks of two kinds of fear. There's a kind of fear that is commanded and the kind that's not commanded. The kind of fear that's commanded is a fear that which involves respect, honor, reverence, and a sense of awe that we should give to God. Thus, we are to fear God. In Ecclesiastes 12, 13 through 14, it says, let us hear the, conclu the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep his commandments, for this is man's will. For God will bring every work into judgment, including every secret thing, whether good or evil. In Acts 9.31, it tells us the story of Saul's conversion. 931, it says, Then the churches through all out Judea, Galilee, and Samaria had peace and were edified. And when walking in the fear of the Lord and in the comfort of the Holy Spirit, they were multiplied. Hebrews 11, 7. Excuse me. I'm having a hard time finding that one. <laughs> Hebrews 11, 7 tells us of Noah's godly fear. Tells us by faith, Noah being divinely warned of things not yet seen, moved with godly fear. He prepared an ark for the saving of his household by which he condemned the world. And he became the heir of righteousness, which is according to faith. This kind of fear leads us to holiness. In 2 Corinthians, Second Corinthians 7, 1, Paul tells the, the uh, people of Corinth that, therefore having these promises, beloved, let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and spirit, perfecting holiness in the fear of God. We have to work out our own salvation with God. Philippians 2, 12 through 13, Paul encourages the people of Philippi to do just this thing. Philippians 2, 12 through 13, says, therefore, my beloved, as you have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but now much more in my absence, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. For it is God who works in you both to will and to do for his good pleasure. 
Do all things without complaining and disputing, that you may become blameless and harmless children of God, without fault in the midst of a crooked and perverse generation, among whom you shine as lights in the world, holding fast the word of life, so that I may rejoice in that day of Christ, that I have not run in vain or labored in vain. It leads to evangelism. 2 Corinthians 5, 9 through 11. It says, therefore, we make it our aim, whether present or absent, to be well-pleasing to him. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, that each one may have received the things done in the body according to what he has done, whether good or bad. We're all going to end up in that judgment seat. These, the fear of God that we have is not to be afraid of God, but to respect Him and honor Him and do His will. Then there's a kind of fear that is forbidden. This is a fear synonymous with dread, alarm, fright, terror, apprehension, anxiety, perplexity, and distrust. This kind of fear should be forbidden because we must trust in God. Psalms 91. Psalms 91. One through six says, he who dwells in the secret place of the most high shall abide under the shadow of the almighty. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress, my God in him I will trust. Surely we shall deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the perilous pestilence. He shall cover you with his feathers and under his wings you shall take refuge. His truth shall be your shield and buckler. You shall not be afraid of the terror by night, nor of the arrow that flies by day, nor of the pestilence that walks in darkness, nor of the destruction that lays waste at noonday. I don't know if you've ever been on a farm and seen a chicken and a mother hen, she puts her wings all around her little chicks to keep them safe. And it's telling us here, it says, and under his wings you shall take refuge. That's basically the same thing. God is constantly protecting us. He's always there for us. It's just up, up to us to have faith in that. We need to seek the kingdom of God. In Luke 12, 29 through 32, tells us, and do not seek what you should eat or what you should drink, nor have an anxious mind for all these things the nations of the world seek after. Your Father knows that you need these things. But seek the kingdom of God, and all these things shall be added to you. God will provide for us. This type of fear is not the one to be confused with caution, though. For example, a fear of being run over by a car will cause you to look both ways before you cross the street. Our slick roads out here, the fear of falling down on the ice makes you be a little more cautious. These kind of fears are normal. Fear of polio or something would cause one to take the vac- vaccine so that they didn't get it. Again, these types of fears are normal, they're good. The areas that fear operates are around us at all times. Men fear failure. Fear of failure caused the one talent man to do nothing when he was given the talent to do. If we turn to Matthew 25, 25, 
It tells us, And I was afraid, and I went and hid your talent in the ground. Look there, you have what is yours. The parable of the talents was when the master gave them talents to work with while he was gone. This person did nothing with it because he was afraid. He was afraid of failing. Our Lord has promised us inevitable and assured success in the things that were really important. In 1 Corinthians 15:58, it says, Be steadfast in the work of Christ, knowing our work is not in vain. It's our duty to do the best that we can and to leave the results in God's hands. Men fear the unknown future. This fear has kept many congregations of the Lord from growing, expanding, building, adding on missionaries, and otherwise doing more work for Christ because they didn't know what was in the future for them. We need to realize that it's a vision and excitement that keeps people in congregations active, vibrant, and growing. Men fear responsibility. Because of this, the one talent man did not assume his responsibility, as we just read in Matthew 25. Because of fear, Israel shirked their responsibility in conquering the land of the Amorites. They were afraid of the Amorites. This is when they sent the spies out to see what was there, and they come back and everything was good, but they reported that the Amorites are bigger than we are. They're, they're, they're just, there's too many of them. And they were afraid. So they didn't, Israel didn't conquer the Amorites at that time. And because of this, God forbade anyone under the age of, or over the age of 20, of going in there. So they ended up wandering around in the woods. Fear will keep us from our responsibility of being fishers of men. Luke 5.10 says, Jesus tells Simon, do not be afraid. From now on, you will catch men. It's up to us to spread God's word. And if we're afraid of doing that, then the job will not get done. Men fear old age. As we get older, we realize that our lives are coming to the end, the end of the life here on this earth. But we have life, an everlasting life with God. The Bible teaches us that honor and glory are attached to old age. In Leviticus 19.32, it says, You shall rise before the gray-headed and honor the presence of an old man and fear your God. I am the Lord. In Proverbs 16.31, says, the silver-haired head is a crown of glory if it is found in the way of righteousness. So old age can be a sign of honor and glory, providing we do our will, do God's will, and do our job. Some of the greatest accomplishments in life have been accomplished by the elderly. The dictionary, Webster's Dictionary, he wrote it at the age of 70. Moses was 80 years old when he led Israel out of bondage. 
We have to realize also that old age is but an indication that one is nearer his home. When we can join Jesus in heaven. Men fear insecurity. Jesus went to great lengths teaching man that he should not have such fears. In Matthew 6, 24 through 34, it says, Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about its own things. Sufficient for the day, its own trouble. Actually, I started, read the end of it first, I'm sorry. It says, no one can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will be loyal to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon. Therefore, I say to you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or what you will drink, nor about your body, what you will put on. Is not life more than food and the body more than clothing? Look at the birds of the air. For they neither sow nor reap nor gather into barns, yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not more of more value than they? Which of you, by worrying, can add one cubit to his statue? So why do you worry about clothing? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They neither toil nor spin. And yet I say to you that even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. Now if God so clothes the grass of the field, which today is and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, will he not much more clothe you, O you of little faith? Therefore do not worry, saying, What shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or what shall we wear? For after these things the Gentiles seek, for your heavenly Father knows that you need all of these, but seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will, shall be added to you. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about its own things, sufficient for the day, its own troubles. God will always provide for us. Fear of doing wrong, Peter caused fear to be guilty of hypocrisy. In Galatians, Galatians 2, 11 through 14. It says, Now when Peter had come to Antioch, I withstood him to his face, because he was to be blamed. For before certain men came from, Jesus, came from James, he would eat with the Gentiles. But then when they came, he withdrew and separated himself, fearing those who were of the circumcision. And the rest of the Jews also played the hip hypocrite with him, so that even Barnabas was carried away with their hypocrisy. But when I saw that they were not straightforward about the truth of the gospel, I said to Peter before them all, If you, being a Jew, live in the manner of Gentiles and not as the Jews, why do you compel Gentiles to live as Jews? Fear often seems like one it seems like it keeps us from taking a stand for the truth. Men fear death. Many are slaves to the fear of death. Hebrews 
Hebrews 2.15, 14 through 15 rather. Inasmuch then as the children have partaken of flesh and blood, he himself likewise shared in the same, that through death he might destroy him who had the power of death, that is the devil, and release those who through fear of death were all their lifetime subject to bondage. The fear of death can be removed when men realize that it's inevitable. We all are going to die. Hebrews 9.27 says, As it is appointed for men to die once, but after this, the judgment. It's a gateway to bliss in association with Jesus Christ. Once we die, we will meet Jesus. Philippians 1, 21 through 23. says, "For for, for to me to live is Christ and to die is gain. But if I live on the flesh, this will mean fruit from my labor, yet what, shall, what I shall choose, I cannot tell, for I am hard-pressed between two, having a desire to depart, to depart and be with Christ, which is far better. Nevertheless, to remain in the flesh is more needful for you. At times, we feel that it would be better for us to die because we would be with God then. But we've, God will decide when that time comes. And it's up to us to do the best that we can while here, we're here on this earth so that we do fulfill God's will. The fear of death can also be removed when we realize that Jesus will be there to take us by the hand. Psalms 23.4 Actually, Psalms 23 says, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup runs over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Jesus is always there to protect us. We need not fear. Some of the effects that fear has on us. Fear makes life a wretched experience and it warps the personality. Fear is a dark room where negatives are developed. How many times do people fear what's going to happen the next day, what's going to happen in the future, yet there's no, they have no control over it whatsoever. And it does nothing but cause heartache. Fear will prevent one from doing the will of God. Men will make up excuses not to do the will of God. Such was the case of Moses when God commanded him to go to the Pharaoh in Egypt. He just just wanted to come up with excuse after excuse why he should not be the one to do it. Yet, it was in God's will that he did. And God pushed him and made him do it. Do we obey God 
for fear? Do we disobey a God for fear of persecution? Fear can render one useless. There's no place in the kingdom of God for the fearful because we are all in a battle against Satan and we need people of courage. We're in an important battle and we need people of courage. Fear brings on the very thing that we fear. Peter's fear of sinking brought on his sinking when Jesus was walking on the water and he told him, come. And he went out and here he is, Peter's walking on the water and then he started fearing it and he started sinking. Fear of disease often brings on illnesses. Some people worry and worry about catching some disease or having some disease, cancer, whatever it may be. And in the end, it actually brings some of it on, brings on heartache. And I, I honestly believe that if a person worries constantly about having a disease and they don't even know it, that it can actually produce it. Our mind is a miraculous thing. Research has shown that 85% of the emotional and physical ills of men are brought on by fear. Fear will cause a person to be lost. Revelations 21, 7 through 8. It says, He who overcomes shall inherit all things, and I will be his God, and he shall be my son. But the cowardly, unbelieving, abominable, murderers, sexually immoral, sorcerers, idolaters, and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burns with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. We need to overcome fear. Remember that fear is strictly prohibited. In fact, fear is the characteristic of the wicked. Proverbs 28.1 says, the wicked flee when no one pursues, but the righteous are bold as a lion. Fear not and be not afraid appear in the Bible 180 times. Enthrone Christ. Peter said in 1 Peter 3, 14 through 15, but even if you should suffer for righteousness sake, you are blessed, and do not be afraid of their threats, nor be troubled, but sanctify the God, Lord God in your hearts, and always be ready to give defense to everyone who asks you a reason for the hope that is in you, with meekness and fear. Peter tells us how it's supposed to be done right there with meekness and fear, having courage. Put your faith and your trust in God. Faith is the foe of fear. We have either a choice of faith or fear. Faith and fear are both belief in, belief in the unknown. We don't know really what's going to happen, but we fear it, or we don't really know what's going to happen, but we have faith that God's going to take care of us. It's up to us to choose wisely. Never lose sight of the fact that you are in the presence of God and that his help is ever near. Never take counsel of your fears. A general who was fearful on an attack planned in the Shenandoah Valley and expressed his fears to Stonewall Jackson was told by the courageous Jackson, General, never take counsel of your fears. 
Don't listen to your fears. Philippians 4.13 is one that I like to live by. It says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Always pray and have faith, and God will deliver us from our fears. At this time, if you have any need to come forward and have any special needs or would like to join the Lord in baptism, do it at this time while we stand and sing.